What's up everybody? I hope you're all doing really well. In this video, I'm going to look at three different ways you can change up the sound of a riff when you're doing some recording uh, based around either your technique, that is your right hand and left hand technique on the instrument, looking at different types of picks and pick materials. And the final one is the old example about how much gain do you need. So we're going to get straight into this. I'm going to give you the same riff played four times using four different right hand pick attacks. The first one is going to be really, really timid and we're going to work our way up to, I would almost say overdoing it and just going absolutely nuts on the guitar. So let's hear the riff and let's hear those four different pick attack approaches. So you can hear there the first example where I'm playing really timid, it's kind of just like a nothing part. It doesn't really do anything for me. It sounds a little bit lame. I can't really think of a musical application for that. The second example is much, much better than the first example, but I think the third example really hits that Goldilocks zone where there's you know just enough attack in there to really give it some stank and some attitude. Whereas the fourth example, uh, like I said, it might be slightly overdoing it, but if you were putting this particular riff into the context of a song, this might be how you play it right at the end of the song where you really wanna max out on the attitude and really make the part pop. But what you can hear there is that just the differences in right hand attack with the pick can have quite an overall effect on the tone and how the riff sits in the mix. I didn't change anything apart from my right hand attack there and we got drastically different results. So let's fix the right hand attack and let's try four different pick materials. I have a 0.46 millimeter uh, thin Jim Dunlop riffs pick, which is nylon. Then I have the green Tortex 3, the 0.88, and this is the pick that I normally use when I'm recording rhythm guitar. Then I have the pick that I play live with and play in the studio with most of the time. This is a Dunlop 1.35 millimeter Tortex. This is like my go-to pick. And then we have this thing, which I believe is a composite material. This is a Wegen or Wedgen Trimus pick. This is 3.5 millimeters thick. Uh, it's pretty ridiculous. So we're gonna hear the difference between these four picks. I've done my best to try and keep the intensity and the attack the same between all of these, but obviously playing it four times in a row, there are gonna be some human differences in there. But hopefully you can discern a difference in the overall tone between the different pick materials as well. So if anything, this really confirmed my preferences. I thought the green Tortex had a really nice attack and a really cool tone about it. And the Jazz 3 sounded really good as well for that kind of single note stuff. Uh, I've found in the past that using these green Tortexes for sort of playing chords and things like that normally has the edge and normally has a little bit more attitude, but I did not mind the Jazz 3 at all, and that kind of confirms why this is my favorite like all-rounder pick for what I like to do. Uh, the nylon lacked a lot of body, in my opinion, and the wagon was a bit dark sounding. But again, everybody's gonna have preferences, and depending on the musical context, uh, they could all be very workable. So, having said that, we're gonna move on to the third example, and this is the big one you see all the time uh, in people talking about videos about how to dial in a good rhythm guitar tone. You read it on forums all the time. You see YouTube videos like this about it all the time, uh, where people say, you know, use less gain when you're double tracking. And of course, all of these examples have been double tracked so far. So let's see, I've got a comfortable amount of gain on at the start for the first incarnation of the riff. Then I have backed the gain off just a little bit. And then for the third example, I have increased increased it just a little bit and have a listen out for not only the differences in the tone but like for how compressed and kind of sticky the riff sounds.
Now, to be honest, in the context of the mix, the like regular gain and the slightly less gain sound really, really similar, but you can hear that using like too much gain, the third example, it really starts to sound a bit darker and more compressed. It almost had the same effect of playing with this uh, Wegen 3.5 mil pick. So, uh, in that example, maybe it wasn't the best example. Like it wasn't like the difference between a super saturated rectifier and I don't know, a crunchy Marshall or something like that. It was the same amp with the gain staged three different ways. But I think out of all of them listening closely on my studio monitors, I actually did prefer the version with less gain. So there's three examples. Hopefully you found this, uh, you know, in some way informative and enlightening. And obviously there are so many other factors which go into capturing a guitar performance and tracking guitars. You know, you can look at stuff like quad tracking. You can look at just really refining the part and playing it. I think out of all of them, uh, the difference in technique probably made the most drastic change in the overall tone and also in the way the kind of riff sits and actually grooves. That's super important as well is like, getting the performance right and making sure you're not rushing too much and you're not too far behind or you're not, you know, on. It really depends on the type of riff you're playing and the feel, that elusive thing, the feel and the groove and getting that right. That is probably the most important thing right up there with how you actually attack the strings and how you play the guitar. More so than any of the other factors, I found the other factors to be a bit more subtle. So let me know what you guys thought about that in the comments. And uh, I've actually gone through and extended this riff a little bit. I've gone for the less gain setting on the amp and I've gone for that kind of in between maybe example three and example four from when we looked at the variations in technique and I used my Dunlop 1.35 mil pick. They were the factors that all converged which made me really happy with the way this particular riff sounded. So I'm gonna play that riff for you. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I really hope you learned something and if you've got input, please put it in the comments. I would love to hear from you guys about what you like to use and what your experiences have been like tracking riffs. Enjoy. I thought they all sounded the same. <laughs>